chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. It says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against us there is no law. Let us all bow in prayer. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We ask for forgiveness, Father God. We know we have gotten off course in so many ways and so many things, Father God. So many adversities have struck in us, Father God. We have been faced, Father God, with the storms of life. But, Father God, I pray right now that you will restore the spirit of love, the spirit of joy and peace, and the spirit of long-suffering, Lord. Give us your spirit of gentleness and goodness and faith, Father God, but the spirit of meekness and temperance. Father God, we have looked at our situations, Father God, and imposed our will upon others, Father but we know that we have to serve those who worship us, worship you in spirit and in truth. Father God, we can't live any kind of way expecting to receive the blessings of you, Father God. But we pray that you would just increase us and restore us, Father God. We need a touch from you once again to be, be purged and re-cleansed once again, Father God. Get our focus back on you, Father God, and not what we can do for man. Now, Father, we pray that this word is going to go forward today with authority, with boldness, and with clarity, that it would not be hindered, Father God, that this word will go forward, Father God, for what you have sent it to our man of God to do. Open ears, open hearts, open minds to receive what the Holy Spirit is truly sent into the church on this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you, Lord. How's everybody doing this morning? Come closer to me. Come closer to me if you don't mind. Come closer to me, my babies. Yeah, get closer to me so I can see you. Y'all don't mind sitting next to one another, do you? I'm sorry, Elder. Yeah, I got it. I like, I like rolling this thing around. Praise the Lord. Touch that person next to you and tell them, I'm glad to sit next to you today. Now, you got to say it like you really mean it now. Praise the Lord. Let's look at something for a few minutes this morning uh, let's thank God again for our spiritual mother thank God for her being in our midst um, persecution persecution have you ever have you ever felt like you you were being persecuted have you have you ever um, anybody got any, any examples of what happened to you cut that Anybody got any examples of, of what happened to you that you can share? Yeah, what, what happened with you? Uh huh. Mm hmm. So she was pulled to bring you, but she didn't. You was trying to give her some money. She didn't even know it, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Anybody else? I'm sorry, baby. Cutting you off. Absolutely. Yes. Turn your Bibles to Matthew 5, 10 through 12. 
find that find that for pastor <clears throat> find that for me persecution we've all been there and let me tell you something if you if you um if you've not been there keep living keep living and i'll also say this to you the more you step into the plan of God for your life, the more you really dedicate and commit yourself to the things of God, the greater the persecution. It will come in waves. When you say, okay, I, I, don't, I don't feel like I'm being persecuted, it could be an indication that you've really not committed yourself completely to the things of God because when you sell out for God, the enemy is going to come from every side. And you have to, you have to, you have to get your mind prepared for that. Uh, you have to know uh, that these kinds of battles are not mine. They are the Lord's. You can't, you can't be tied up in a whole lot of uh, foolery with people, uh, arguing and fussing and all of that kind of thing about stuff. You just got to know who you are in God, what God has called you to do, and stay focused. Now, look what the Bible says. Do you have it? Matthew Matthew 5. What does it say there? Who, who has it? Read, read it for me. Wow. So in verse 10, he says, blessed are those who are persecuted for what? Righteousness, Righteousness sake. And in the NIV, it says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people, uh, what, what does King James say? Revile you. Revile. New International Version says, insult you. Touch your neighbor, tell them, I'm more blessed than I realized. <laughs> And say all kinds of man of evil against you. One of the signs that you're blessed is when people start cursing you. You know what I mean? And where this arises more than any other place is probably in your family and in your church. Because these are the two fundamental institutions that the enemy wants to attack. He wants to attack your family structure and then he wants to attack your fellowship. So the enemy uses people in our families, and he uses people in our churches to come against us. And a lot of times, they don't even realize what they're doing. And the intention is to break your spirit, to break your focus. You got to know that. Uh, blood is thicker than water. That's a nice little, uh, you know, greeting card, I suppose. But that's not reality. Some of, your, some of your worst enemies will be those of your own house who have your, who have your blood running through their veins. That, that don't mean nothing. You can give birth to a joker that grow up to be your, your chief enemy. You know what I mean? These little cute babies y'all got, that's, that's, that's uh, hallelujah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You don't know what you... You, you know you make the sacrifice, but you don't know what that's going to end up being. You'd be amazed at how many parents got to pray because their own seed is giving them the kind of blues that they never experienced before. Their own children coming against them. Got them in court and all kind of stuff. Trying to take what's theirs. You mess around and get older with some of these, these uh, demonic children, man. They feel like they can take advantage of you. They'll do anything they can. So it comes from all kinds of directions. But the thing I want you to see is that he says, you're blessed. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. So what does that say to me? All I have to do is make certain that I keep my heart, my motives, and my agenda right. You know what I'm saying? People will say anything. They'll say all kinds of stuff. And, and the more God blesses you, the more people are going to talk. 
more God blesses you, the more people are going to talk. When, when Joseph came in and started talking about what God showed him, the Bible says his brothers hated him yet the more, which means they already hated him. But once he started talking about the blessing that was on his life, they hated him even the more. So the more God blesses you, the more people will hate you. Yeah, you got to be, you got to be ready for that. You can't be moved and shaken by, by all of this stuff that's going on with people, man. People running you all up out of your church. You know, you, you're trying to get away from people that's running their mouth. Well, the next church you go to, they're going to run their mouth too. You're going you gonna to let the devil run you till you're going to be in nobody's church? Huh? See, I never thought about what Sister Rankin said. That, that woman, I, I, I was a young man. And the Lord gave me that thing. And she, I never thought about it. She could have just been lying. I never thought about that. But it put a seed of discouragement in my heart, which made me what? Apprehensive. And that was the whole point from the very beginning. It was to try to strangle out the seed, the prophetic seed that God had put in my life. That's the purpose of this stuff. That's why you got all this stuff coming against you and all of these people. And what really gets you is when you've done everything for these people. You've been over backwards, taking your last and all this kind of stuff, sacrifice, inconvenience yourself. And these are the main ones that rise up to try to pull your name down. All right. Go to Matthew 10, 22. Matthew 10, 22. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 10, 22. What does it say, Don? And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endured to the end shall be saved. You shall be hated of who? All men. Touch your name to him. It's not a, it's not a new thing. It's not a strange thing. When you love Jesus, the world will hate you. When you love Jesus, the world will hate you. You know, I look at some of this stuff that goes on today, man. Jay Monetti. And people don't really love God. And the more foolishness they carry on, the more the world loves them. But when you really love God, you saw like some of y'all didn't have problems with your people until you really fell in love with God. You start trying to live halfway. When I was living like a devil, everybody loved me. When I start trying to get myself halfway together, them jokers turned on me. Y'all see the birthday girl coming up the aisle now? It's her birthday today. Hallelujah. She, 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 she grins on her birthday now. Hallelujah. If she ain't grinning no other day in the year, she grins on her birthday. I like the way she enjoys her birthday. You should, baby. Y'all say happy birthday to her. Yeah. Sit on down. Now sit on. We ain't singing no song. Y'all sit down. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I done started a mess here. <laughs> Only at New Home, baby. Only at New Home. <laughs> Any other church, the deacons be them picked up by our ankles. <laughs> Carry it on out of here. Out of here. Just, you just wrapped in the service. Just wrapped in the service. <laughs> Go to Psalm 119, 86. There's sometimes you're going to be persecuted and you've done absolutely nothing to people. <sighs> Sometimes you're going to be persecuted and you've done nothing but your best. Have you ever had that? Where, where you did your best for people and they had the spirit of misunderstanding on them and took your good and labeled it as evil and cast your name out like you were no good and low down? Huh? 
It happens to me all the time as a pastor. People misunderstand me and just drag me, man. Lord, have mercy. I'm so glad the Lord has toughened me up. My feelings used to get hurt. My feelings don't even get hurt no more. My feelings don't get hurt no more. You can't do this business here. You can't do this job with your feelings hurt. Because people will hurt your feelings. I promise you, they will hurt your feelings. You know, you give them half their rent. They say, he, sh he should have gave me the whole thing. <laughs> well, Bill, you ain't the only one around here uh, who's rent. What's wrong, you know? Yeah, but you should have gave me the whole thing. Okay. Give me my money back. Give me the half I gave you. Give it back. What does, what does it say there, Doc? All of thy commandments are what? Faithful. God, you're going to do exactly what you said. If I do my part, you're going to do your part. They persecute me, what? Wrongfully. Touch your neighbor, tell him, if you're wrongfully persecuted, welcome to the club. Now, you know where you find a lot of this at? And some of y'all, a lot of y'all probably can attest to this, is with grown children. Your grown children will make you out to have been the worst parent in the world. Huh? You did everything you could possibly do. You have been over backwards. You did, you know, it's, it's on the job training as it is. And you just did everything you could possibly, and them Negroes have a way of growing up, looking you in your face and telling you, you ain't did nothing. That's right. You ain't did nothing. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about up in here? And make you out to have been the worst parent in the world. <laughs> and you got to learn to look at them and say, God bless you. I ain't going back and forth with you. I ain't going back and forth with you. God bless you. You grown, God bless you. Do you. I'm going to take the rest of my life and do me over here. Just don't come over here bothering me. Hallelujah. Leave me and my woman alone. Don't come over here bothering me. They what wrongfully persecuted me. Uh-huh. Okay, now let's get some perspective. Go to John 15 and 20. Go to John 15 and 20. See, because you think you're special. Let's get some perspective here. Is this helping anybody? Yeah. In, in, in the church of God in Christ, say, read. Remember the word that I said unto you. The servant is not greater than his law. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. But they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. So Jesus said, they what? Done it to me? They're going to do it to you. Touch your neighbor, tell them they're going to get you, baby. They're going to get you. But no weapon formed against you shall what? Prosper. You know, I, I, I think I think God I've grown. Boy, I remember it was shortly after Katrina. And see, mind you now, mind you, and I can say this. But prior to um, Katrina, man, I had never really known what, I, I didn't know nothing about no, um, I hadn't really been tested. You know what I mean? I, you, you, sometimes you be thinking you, you, you going through, you ain't going through nothing. Hey, you ain't going through nothing. Especially when you have, you know, strong pastor, spiritual father. They cover you from a whole lot of stuff you don't even realize. You don't even realize it's in the, in the vicinity. Yes, but man, when Katrina hit, yeah. oh my goodness. Boy, you talk about shaking to the core. <laughs> and I'm just reeling. I ain't never felt nothing like this. I have never experienced nothing like this before. It was the worst and the best time of my life. Did y'all hear what I just said? It was the worst and the best time of my life. If I had not gone through that, and if I had not gone through my father going to heaven, I would not be the man I am today. 
The worst times of your life are really, when you think about it, the best times of your life. And probably everybody in this room can testify the worst seasons of your life, you wouldn't change a thing about it because it improved you. It developed you. It strengthened you. It made you who you are. Am I helping anybody? But I remember after Katrina, man, I'm sitting on an airplane, broke, broke as the Ten Commandments. Literally. I, I mean, I don't have a dime. And I'm bouncing back and forth from Houston to New Orleans trying to do whatever, you know, just look, it looked absolutely hopeless. And I'm sitting on the airplane, in fact, about it was Bishop Darrell Bristol and I sitting on the airplane, and he pulled up his iPad. He, he's aged, I've aged. This thing is wearing us completely out. And he pulls up on the iPad with somebody uh, put out there in, on the um, internet. Our Robert Charles Blakes Jr., the uh, heir apparent to the, the Blakes dynasty, takes all of the money from New Orleans, millions of dollars from New Orleans, and he goes to Houston, Texas to build a church and buys a big house. Now, mind you, I'm sitting on Southwest Airlines. Don't have a dime in my pocket. I'm preaching better than y'all shout. I'm trying my best to just obey God because it's not even in my nature to be running around like this. I want to be still. I, I had grown accustomed to being in one church as a pastor doing real good. Wasn't used to being broke like this. Wore out like this. And I'm sitting and I'm reading this. And he, he was sitting there reading. He was laughing. I said, man... Then they start talking about him. I said, man, I don't want to hear no more. Don't read me no more. He said, you don't want to hear no more, Bob? I said, I don't want to hear no more. But see, he had, he had gotten accustomed to it. I, that was my first time dealing with that. Somebody just blatantly lying on me on a platform that, you know, goes around the world. And so then, man, I started seeing this. People start saying that. People start saying that. And as time went on, man, it, it becomes funny to me now. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what they say. As long as long as I know that I'm right with God, you can say what you want. In fact, about it, God will use your haters to give you publicity. People come to check out how no good and low down you are, and they discover your heart. We've got members like that. Because people dragging in the street, folk comes in, let me see there's no good man come in and feel nothing but love and purity. So you gotta, you touching it, you gotta get accustomed to this. Yeah, because this ain't gonna change. If they did it to Jesus, they gonna get you. Now look what the Bible says in Romans 12, 14. Read Romans 12, 14. Read! So what do you think that means? What do you think, what do you think the, the warfare, because that is warfare, you know. What do you think the warfare is, warfare is when he says, bless them that persecute you? Treat them kindly, do good to them, right? You got to fight your flesh. Okay, see, now that's good right there. So the only way I can, can bless those that are persecuting me is that I have to, I have to deny, to deny me. I have, that means I have to do the, the necessary work to keep my flesh under control and to stay in the spirit. Correct? Secondly, once I accomplish that and I bless you when you are persecuting me, now I'm confusing that spirit that's operating in you. Because you don't know what to do with that. The third thing I'm doing is I'm dismantling. See, because your, your haters and your persecutors are always building a public uh, campaign against you. They're trying to make everybody see you in a negative light. 
And so they'll go around, they'll plant seeds. You know, Lentrell did this and Lentrell is that. They'll go around and they'll plant these seeds in people's minds. And so now people are looking that you don't even realize are looking. But when you bless your haters, they're confused. And then the people that are sitting around looking saying, oh, wait a minute. Then trail blessing past and pastor out here dragging for her like that. So now you take your, your, your following the scripture takes the focus off of what the enemy, the lie the enemy is trying to promote and it uncovers the truth. See, like on your job, and, and you know, you go in that, that office or wherever you work at, and you go to blessing the people that's misusing you. They're trying to drag for you. You know they're dragging for you. And you go through the office and say, man, you know, I thank God for Mr. So-and-so, Miss So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so. You know, just bless them. You, you, do, you know, you do a great job. They're they dragging you. He incompetent, she incompetent. They don't know what they're doing. And you go right behind them after lunch. You know what they said. Say, you know, I thank God for you. Man, you're so smart. You know everything. Ooh, I wish one of these days, I wish I could be smart like you. I don't know what this office would be without you. Now they're all uncomfortable. Because they know they drag for you. They're trying to smile in your face. All the while trying to take your place. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? You gotta learn. You gotta learn how to hate. You gotta learn how to handle a hater. You shut that spirit down. You shut that spirit down. A spirit like that cannot operate without people being glad about what they're doing. So when they talk about you, you smile at them. And then when you smile at them, you cause them to wonder about what you're doing. See, a duck only gets hurt when he opens his mouth. And if you learn to keep, if you learn to keep the Spirit of God on the inside, then they cannot hurt you on the outside. You know what I mean? Like when you have these, um, these old fake family members. Coming, coming all up in your house and everything. You know they ain't no good. Okay, let's see something here. Okay. Sometimes you think that, uh, and, and tell me if, you, if, you, if you've been guilty of this because I know I have. You think that you can uh, be nice enough to change a hater's heart. If I'm just nice to them, they won't persecute me no more. And you turn yourself into a, a, a welcome mat. Major people just stepping on you. You, know, you. you cannot be nice. You can't buy love. Touch that name, tell me, you can't buy love. You can't buy it. If a person just has a, a polluted, filthy heart, you may as well accept that. You are not going to be loved and accepted by most people. E even most of the folk that you think are your best buddies because they're smiling in your face, they are the most dangerous of all. I'd rather hate any day that look me in my eye and tell me I hate you than one of these haters that sit down and eat, eat your food and all of that. Talking to you on the phone all day. And then you find out later, this joker had an agenda against you. You got to accept these things. You got to put your big boy drawers on with this one now. Yeah, you got to put your big boy drawers on. This is real life. <laughs> Am I right, Mark? This is real life I'm talking here. Man, this life here will break you down if you don't understand these things. This is some of the stuff my, my old man was trying to teach me. But see, some stuff in life, you, really can't, you can't really communicate it through words. You got to live it. You got to go through it. You got to feel the pain. Okay, 2 Timothy 3.12.
Stop right there. What did he say? All that will live godly in Christ Jesus. What? So, so all you got to do to be persecuted is to live for God. Everybody people talking about ain't wrong. When folk go to dragging folk down, don't just accept that at face value. Go to discern in that situation. Because all you got to do to be persecuted is to live godly. In fact about it, what I'm discovering is the people that really strive to live godly are talked about the more. These demonic and ungodly and perverted people that just do anything they're big enough and bad enough to do, the world loves them. You got to really start looking at a person when you hear folk dragging folk. Because all you have to do to be persecuted is love God. And it hurts, it just, you know, until you get used to it, it hurts your feelings so bad. You sit in the Lord, you're lying in your bed crying. Lord, I ain't doing nothing but trying to live right. I ain't doing nothing but trying to live right. These people talking about me, Jesus. But he says all that will live what? Godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer what? Persecution. Persecution. Finally, go to 1 Corinthians 4 and 12. 4, 12 and 13. 1 Corinthians 4, 12, and 13. Look how it reads in the NIV. When we are cursed, we bless. When we are persecuted, we endure it. When we are slandered, we answer kindly. See, and that's, that's one of my big things. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love to deal with people I know don't like me. I do. I really do love it. I love it. I love it. I absolutely love it. When I, when I know a joker don't like I love it. Oh, I'm going to harass that joker. Can I have a hug? <laughs> they got to put that little fake smile on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how people hug you with their fingertips? Love it. I was in... Uh, Detroit recently, and man, it was it was after church, and uh, yeah, so nowhere to eat at this time of night. So we go to the hotel, and the little restaurant is supposed to be open for like another forty-five minutes. That's that's a long time. So we go in there, and the waitress clearly, you know, she's frustrated, irritated that we came in there. Like, you can be irritated all you want. I'm eating tonight. And boy, so she just, you know, she just nasty. She just rushing and everything. And uh, the pastor, I was, we said, man, she got a bad attitude. I said, yeah. And then by the time she came back, I said, uh, something, something like, you know, you know, you, you have a sweet spirit. <laughs> yeah, you a sweet spirit. She looking, you know. She went back, she came back again, some water or something. I said, you know, you're just a wonderful waitress. I said, I'm so glad that we got your table tonight. You know. So then she come back. Um, y'all ready to order? Now mind you, you still got about another 40 minutes before the plane's supposed to go. I said, oh yeah, we're gonna order right now. I'm rushing all the people to the table. I said, I want da 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 da. And everybody else ordered. And then she kept coming. I just kept on pouring it on, just speaking kindly to her. By the time I got through with that girl, she said to me, I, she said to us, I apologize for having such a bad attitude earlier. 
Now, nobody called out. Nobody said you have a bad attitude. I'm just speaking kindly to her the whole while. And she come right back and said, I apologize for that. It's just that I'm trying to go somewhere. Young, young girl, you know. I'm trying to go somewhere, and I was trying to get out of here early. I said, well, babe, we're going to let you out here early tonight. And I say, enjoy yourself. And then gave her a great tip. She said, y'all coming back tomorrow? I said, no, I won't be here tomorrow. Hallelujah. I won't be here tomorrow. Huh? She wanted me to come back tomorrow, you know. But see, she had probably never encountered somebody who actually handled her like Jesus would. You really, you really discover the depth of your Christ's likeness in how you deal with your haters. If you cannot handle people that don't, if you cannot handle people lovingly who do not handle you properly, you ain't got very much spiritual depth. Do it all the time in, in, as a pastor. People leave this church and say all kind of stupid stuff. Y'all don't hear me getting up in the pulpit inferring or saying stuff. Bro, so and so's left here, and he said, That's why I, you know, I want y'all to know he got my money six months ago and ain't paid me. That's why he left. And a lot of them do that. They borrow your money and they can't pay it back, so they leave. And then they drag for you. You don't never hear that. I always keep a loving spirit whenever I see people. I keep a loving spirit. You know why? Because a lot of those folk come back. And if as a leader, I'm too immature to answer or to speak kindly of them, if I'm going to come to their level, what kind, of, what kind of nursery school is it where the, the director fighting with the uh, toddlers? And you, the toddler on the floor with his diaper hanging off and the director on the floor with her wig hanging off and they fighting. Somebody got to be an adult around here. Am I helping anybody up in here? Somebody got to be an adult. Let me read this and then I'm going to let y'all go. Watch this. Oh, let's see something, y'all. Go to Romans 12, 17 and 19. 17 through 19. And I got to go for real, y'all. It's supposed to have been at the funeral, 20, funeral 25 minutes ago. Where to y'all go? Romans 12, 17 through 19. Here's NIV. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everybody. I, I, I can't speak for you, but I'm going to be at peace. I'm not going to have nothing in my heart against you. And I'm going to deal with you because I'm also understanding, watch this. Not, not only are you seeing how I'm responding or reacting to you, but other people are seeing it. And more importantly, God is seeing it. And at the end of the day, I cannot misuse you and not have to give an account to God. Oh. So, so I, don't have to, I don't have to tie my life up I don't have to tie my mind and my spirit up trying to figure out how to get even with you. I'm not trying to get even with you because you're in the gutter. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? I'm not trying to get even with you because you are in the gutter. It means I got to come down to get even with you. I choose to stay where I'm at and to keep moving and leave you in the hands of God and let my behavior be a witness. Because some of y'all got some dirty, no good people that have misused you. And the devil been working on your mind about getting even, getting back. No, 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 no. You don't want to get even, babe. You want to go higher. 
We are on top and going where? We ain't getting even with nobody. I'm not answering nobody evil for evil. You drag for me, I'm going to speak kindly of you. I'm going to love you. See? This is church 101 right here. This is the stuff, some of this stuff need to be taught in new members class. Because not understanding this stuff right here is the reason most folk are not in fellowships today. It's the reason we got a whole generation of young folk that don't want to come to church. They watch their parents participate in all this kind of foolish stuff. Their parents and their grandparents for the last two generations, they watch them participate in all this hypocrisy and all this backstabbing and all of this stuff. People smiling in your face dragging for you at the same time they watch this. But you're going to be persecuted, babe. You're going to be persecuted. Get ready for it. Bishop Jake said, get ready, get ready, get ready. You are going to be persecuted. I'm done. I'm done. Did y'all get anything out of this? Praise the Lord. I am done. Thank you, Jesus. Join hands. Join hands with that person next to you. Ooh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Baby, the Spirit of God is going to give you wisdom. Wisdom. Wisdom to make choices and decisions that you need to make. You may not have a person physically present, but the Lord said, I'm going to give her wisdom to make choices and decisions. Wisdom. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. God, 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 I thank you for just pouring out upon this house today. God, we've come together on this Saturday morning. And now, God, I thank you for just pouring out upon us today. <sighs> thank you for pouring out upon us today, Father. Reviving and restoring and renewing, rejuvenating, restoring, rekindling, God, we thank you for just doing it again, 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 doing it again. Some of us have just been going through it, God. We've not understood it. God, I thank you for the word today that it becomes a revelation to our hearts. Restore that joy today, God. Restore that peace today, God. Restore that energy today, God. Hallelujah. We even thank you today, God, for healing the bodies of your sons and daughters. Physical healings, God. We thank you for it now. We thank you for it. 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 Speak blessing over this house in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus hallelujah release those hands and give God a shout in this place hallelujah come on give him a shout in this place give God a shout in this place Give God a shout in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Get my checkbook out of there, baby. I want to receive this offering this morning, and then I want to release Pastor Robinson and Elder Brown to just minister to you today. Those of you that need prayer. <sighs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To release them to just pray for you today listen 
let's let's give today with let's give with a spirit of not only gratitude but liberality let's give with a spirit of gratitude and liberality any tithers in the room today I'm gonna start this offering today with a hundred dollar seed Elder, could you fill that out for me I'm gonna start this offering with a hundred dollar seed and I want you today to get a comparable seed based on how God has blessed you based on how God has blessed you if you can give a hundred I want you to give a hundred we got a we got to stretch. Elder Trudy was just talking about how the Lord was challenging her to get back to giving. And I believe the Lord is challenging all of us to get back to giving. Difficult times in economy and government stifled a lot of us in terms of our giving. But you got to step up out of that spirit of fear now and get on back into your faith and trust God for your economy. Trust God for your economy. Jesus' is name. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you who are tithing, I want you to bring your tithe. Let Pastor receive your tithe this morning. This looks like family today.